everyone, Mr. E here, and in this video, I'm reviewing another 3D printer and one of my favorite printers, the Lulzbot Mini 2. So before we dive into the 10 things that I love and hate about this printer, I just want to make it super clear that while I do have a really solid relationship with Lulzbot and that I create their Lulz Lesson STEM curriculum, which is free projects and lessons for teachers and makers alike, this really is my printer and these really are my views. So 10 things that I love and hate about this printer. Why am I making this now? I mean, the Lulzbot Mini 2 is not new. It's been out for almost five years. So I've been motivated to make this video because A, it's awesome, and B, despite the fact that I can identify some things that aren't awesome about this printer, it is still one of my favorite 3D printers to this day, even though it is starting to show its age. And I wanna make it super clear that I don't hate this printer. Hate's a pretty strong word, but no printer is perfect, and through this, I plan on showing you the things that I think are most notable in both the good and the bad. So starting with my number one favorite thing about the Mini 2, and that's its durability. Not only is this metal frame legitimately robust, its calibration features allow it to print pretty solid and reliable, even if you take this thing and throw it into the back of your car. I talk a lot more about this in my other Mini 2 review video, where I literally do throw this in the back of my car, drive it an hour, and see what it prints like. So definitely if you are moving this printer around, if you plan on beating this up or traveling or moving, this is the printer for you because it can take a beating. Something that I don't love is the lack of the filament sensor, especially because Lulzbot has recently released filament sensor upgrades for some of their other older models like the Workhorse and the Taz 6. And of course the new Sidekick and the Taz Pro comes with it out of the box if you'd like it to. So I wish that there was an upgrade for the Mini 2 because I know that's something that a lot of users want. I've personally been working with printers without filament sensors for a while, so I know that you can make do, but the peace of mind about having a sensor is something that I think would be beneficial to this, so hopefully there is a factory-specific upgrade. I know you can install OctoPrint on this with a Raspberry Pi and mod your own filament sensor, but the user-friendliness of something out of the Lulzbot box is definitely something that I think this could benefit from. Next was something else that I love, it's the calibration features. Now like the Lulzbox that we're familiar with, it does have the four leveling washers that the nozzle taps each time to make sure that the bed is level. It also has a wiper pad, and that wiper pad allows you to clean the nozzle, and by you, I mean it, it does it automatically every single print. I will say that I know a lot of users run into some trouble with these leveling washers, and that's because if the nozzle isn't super clean, the calibration isn't gonna be really solid. So one mod that I recommend you do is get rid of the default wiper pad and swap it out for some Scotch-Brite. And I do have a cool file that you can download to 3D print your own little holder that can do this mod very easily. And I know some users are gonna comment below saying Scotch-Brite is too abrasive and you're gonna wear down your nozzle. I've had this mod on most of my printers for a very long time and 25,000 hours in, I haven't worn through a nozzle yet so I'm not super worried about it. Another great feature that this printer has is that it can automatically level the X axis using the Z aligned feature. So that allows this X gantry to drop all the way down to square itself up to make sure it's perfectly horizontally level, which gives you way more reliable prints. And that's something that I don't run every time I print something, but if I ever do move this printer around or if I put a lot of stress on the gantry from cleaning the head or loading filament, I always run that calibration feature to make sure that this thing is square and rock solid. Something that I don't love is the build volume. So compared to the original mini, this got a little bit of a kick with 6.3 by 6.3 by seven, but that's still not huge. That said, I think it's reasonable. I think it does work for most projects and most makers, but for the price point of $1,500, which I'll get to in a moment, there are printers with bigger build volumes. I mean, even from Lulzbot themselves, you can get a sidekick for less money with more of a volume. So that's why I feel like, despite the fact that this is a usable amount of space, I'm not gonna say it's my favorite feature about this printer. Having a larger build volume is always appreciated. While we're on the subject, let's talk about price, which I feel like is something I love and hate. 
At the time of making this video, you could buy a Mini 2 for around $1,500. And if you compare the durability and the performance, especially when you put the Mini 2 next to the more expensive higher end Lowe's bots, like the Workhorse or even the Pro, the $1,500 gives you a lot for your money. That said, there are a lot of 3D printers for less. I mean, even within the Lowe's bot lineup, you can get a Taz Sidekick 289 for $500 less or a 747 with more build volume for $300 less. And of course, outside of Lowe's bot, there are tons of options. So while I do think you do get a pretty fantastic performance printer for $1,500, there are a lot of other printers that you can get for less or even two printers that you can get for the price of this that give you some of the same similar features. I think that if you are looking for a super durable and super reliable printer, there are a few that come close to this, even within the Lowell's Bot lineup. So it's still a pretty solid option, but definitely not one of its strong suits compared to all of its other features. Another thing that I love is the volume. This is a silent printer. And what I mean by that is it's been next to me printing this whole time right in front of the microphone and I bet that you can barely hear it or at the very least hear me fine. If this wasn't literally next to me, if it was behind me or over here out of camera shot, this could be running and you wouldn't hear it at all. And sure, there are a lot of printers with basically silent stepper motors and I've used a lot of them from the Prusa Mini to the newer MakerBots or even other Lowe's bots, but this thing is just silent and that's so nice. I know that a lot of users have commented on my other videos about putting their printers on concrete blocks to make it quiet. Not with this one. You could just put it where you want it to be, push print, and enjoy. Something that I absolutely love is the print speed. I don't know if it's that this printer is smaller or the gantries are lighter or what, but even compared to my other Lowell spots, which have essentially the same print heads and the same stepper motors, this prints significantly faster. Both in Cura, when I'm slicing the models, it says that the print time is less, but even in the real world, side by side, this usually finishes quicker at the same print quality. With the high speed also comes quality. The Lowell Mini 2 is one of my best performing printers, and I do even have a Pro and some high-end SLA, and no, I'm not saying that any FFF or extrusion type 3D printer can match the quality of an SLA printer, but in the real world, when you compare the cost of the filament, the actual setup time, this printer outputs from absolutely fantastic quality models. So something that I never used to mind, at least when this printer came out and I first got it, is the interface, but now it's a bit of a nuisance. You get the same pretty simple GUI that you get on most other Lowell's Bot printers, and don't get me wrong, it does the job and it's easy to navigate, but compared to some of the new printers with fancy color touchscreens, it is starting to show its age, and I know a lot of users prefer to have USB drives instead of SD cards or built-in Wi-Fi printing, and yes, you can mod all of that by throwing a Raspberry Pi touchscreen on here with Octoprint, but still, out of the box for $1,500, it would be nice to get a slightly higher end user interface, something like that's on the Taz Pro, or even something that's on a much, much, much cheaper printer like the Prusa Mini. And lastly, my favorite thing about this printer is just the Lowell's Bot-ness of it. Lowell's Bot is an awesome brand that gives you so many different guides and user instructions on their open source hardware network because you can mod these things, you can download the parts, you can 3D print replacement parts as it needs. Like all Lowell's bots, you can swap the tool head out, which I talk more about in my other video. So that allows me to throw on the super high speed 1.2 millimeter nozzle head and create very durable, very large parts super fast, or throw on the small layer height and print parts at super high detail with 0.1 millimeter per layer with great ease and reliability. You could of course swap between the 175 head if you want to print 175 filament, and all of these options to be able to customize this printer without losing the quality and with also the user friendliness of it and the fact that you can just swap ahead and let Cura update the firmware for you and prepare your models accordingly just makes this a super reliable and user friendly printer. And that's definitely my favorite thing about it is that you can put this thing in pretty much any environment and find consistent success. So all in all, I really do love this printer. And despite owning many other printers, most of which cost significantly more or do many more fancy things, I find myself going to this one. And I don't really know why. It's just such a nice place to be. And it's consistent and it works and it does the job. And it's just an awesome little printer, which is why I was finally, after all this time, motivated to make this video. So thanks so much for watching. Please check out my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. Happy printing, everybody.